HS Tech Channel. Hello everyone, welcome to the HS Tech Channel. In this video we're going to look at C tags, Vim Omni Completion, and using this to write C programs with some auto completion that is a little bit more advanced than just looking at a reference card or a manual page. This is actual true auto completion that is actually very useful. So let's get started. Now the first thing I should know, or the first thing you should know, is that there's several C tags programs available. If I'm on FreeBSD and I just run man C tags, this is going to show me the built-in C tags that hasn't been updated since, well let's see, uh, 1993. Yeah, that's not going to really work. Apparently, it can barely discriminate between C, Pascal, and Fortran functions. But yes, even this old version of C tags supports more than just C. However, in this video, I'm only sticking to C. If you wish to use C tags with Rust, it will work. However, we're not going to use this C tags. We're going to use this C tags. Now, this right here is universal C tags, and I compiled it 57 minutes ago. And this is the one that you actually want to use. This one is modern and pretty much free of bugs for the most part that would otherwise plague you. There's also exuberant C tags, which is not what you want. This one is definitely the one you want. So I'm currently in my home directory and I'm, let's go ahead and look at our vimrc file. This right here is going to set your Omni completion type. And this is really what you're doing is you're using Omni completion with the C tags file that tells Vim what the function definitions are, macro definitions, structure definitions, all of that. Now we're going to look at all that. In this case, you need to actually tell Vim, oops, where your C tags files are. In this case, I only have two. And these two C tags files are the system wide one that we're going to generate in a second. And then the one in the current directory, which we're going to use for the program that we're working on. So let's go ahead and generate that system-wide one. So let's go ahead and user local bin c tag slash r for recursive slash user slash include. This is going to run. This is an old slow Pentium 2 after all. And once that's done, we'll see our nice 17 megabyte file. Now we're going to move into tag. We're going to move this into dot vim slash system dot tags as we told it it would be at earlier. And now from here we can go ahead and actually start doing an example. So let's go ahead and start writing our nice spiffy C program. And let's see C tags in action. Now there's two things you can do. You can use C tags for keyword finding. So let's just do that in example. So let's say we forget what stir copy is. So if we type this in and then we do control closed bracket, so that's not an open bracket, that's a closed bracket. Um, not to be confused with the telnet escape character, it's the other bracket from that. And this is of course located to the left of backslash on a US layout keyboard. If we push that, well we need to write the file first. You push that, it will whip you to the file that has this definition and it will obviously tell you, here you go, this is obviously the stack smashing protection version of this that the GNU C compiler is going to use. Because you'll see this go up here, oh, there you go, this file is part of GCC. And this right here is exactly what this is. Okay, well, I'm stuck here. How do I get out? Just push Control-T. Control-T will get you out of that. Now, let's take this up a notch. Let's say printf. Now, of course, this right here is a function that is obviously veridic. So if I do this, we're probably not going to get it because it didn't get caught in our scan. But let's up the ante even more. Let's say I forget how to spell printf. Well, okay, well, mm, all right, well, just push control N on your keyboard. Boom. Here's all of your choices. Now some of these are good choices, others are not really good choices. Like some of these are macros and some of these are constants. None of these are really what I want, but this is ultimately the one I want. And that's pretty good. All right, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. That gives me some rudimentary autocompletion, but that is just that, it's just rudimentary autocompletion. It's not that good. Well, let's take it up a notch. Let's say that I didn't fully type this out. Well, we're gonna use auto-completion of the Omni type. Yes, we're gonna use Omni-completion. So do Control X, then Control O. And this right here will actually tell us what we're looking at the, well, if it is a function or not, and of course, the parameters. Now, of course, stircat, well, that's obviously a macro as we saw it was before, but stircar is not. And this right here is Oop, what we're after. 
and if you don't have a full match, it won't autocomplete it in. But this will also tell you what the function parameters are. And this is where this really, really shines. And yes, if you're using C++, there you go, it'll also tell you that as well. And it pretty much gives you really intelligent completion. Like Sturtok, there you go. This is quite nice. Uh, no, this is not how you use this function, by the way. This is not a C programming guide. Now, let's take it up a notch. If we get out of this, you may notice that we still have this reference here in our vimrc file to the tags file in the current directory. Well, let's buff up our program here just a little bit with an example function. And also an example structure. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get out of this and we're actually going to run C tags on this file. And now when we rerun our editing session, we now have these tags loaded in for these. So let's really demonstrate where this shines. If I do struct my, we can do our keyword completion here with control N. Well, that's the only match. Of course, Omni completion will get us here as well. Okay. Oh. Now, what if I can't see this at all? Well, we have two options. For one, I can do, of course, Control close bracket, which whips me right there. Control T is, of course, going to take me back. They're in the same file, so it doesn't really make a difference. But I can also do tester dot, and here's the kicker: Control X, Control O, boom. There are our parameters, and this will tell you how to access these and how they are accessed. Of course, for a pointer, you of course use the arrow operator. For everything else, you don't. And there you go. This just works. Now, grant this is a little clunky and suboptimal, but nonetheless, it would work. That's how you actually do it. But we're not actually doing this the proper way. We're just doing this for a demonstration. But this will autocomplete structure members. Quite nice, really. And really, it's not that bad. For what it's worth, yes, it is relatively primitive, but it gets the job done. And also, that dialog does follow the color scheme. If we use that, and we come back here, it's gonna follow the color scheme as well. Grand, this is probably not best because it's a solid black background. It gets the job done. Now, you can also do this for comparisons as well if we have some kind of integer. Now note that it's not showing up. That's because we did not add it into the tags file and that's to be expected. However, if I do C tags like this, now in theory, this should have been reloaded. Ah, it didn't. You have to reset the set tags option to get it to reload, but that's okay. And there you go. That's just a basic guide on how to use C tags. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It certainly gets the job done. For instance, if you get lost on a tag, here you go. You can go whip to the definition. If you get lost on a tag in another file, there you go, it'll open it right away. And of course you can get rid of this dialog up here using your standard multi-buffer commands, but I'm just going to quit out of this because I think that's going to wrap it up. It's not too terribly difficult to use and it's a great tool to have in your chest.